Hey YouTube, uh, welcome to all my subscribers again and to the new viewers. I hope you guys enjoy this ch uh, enjoying this channel. So today I'm doing another interview. Uh, you guys maybe saw a couple. I did one about my job. I did an interview with one of my friends for supply and then another one with uh, my friend who was a services member. So today we're going back into logistics and we're going to be interviewing one of my other friends. Uh, his name's Mason. And we're going to be talking about what is called field call operations. Uh, you guys might know, see a lot on the airforce.com. Uh, we're just going to do this simply as before, a breakdown about the job, the where you can be stationed at, the importance of the job, and then of course, just the overall perspective of it. So first of all, what's the job called? Field call operations. And then what was the AFSC code? 2T1, X1. X1. So as you can see, 2T, mine was 2TO. No, TTO, transportation, as you can see. So this one and his and the supply one falls under logistics. So pretty much your job, like what do you guys do is like break it down, like the different sections and overall, what's your overall goal or mission of the job, like the, your job? Well, our main job is transportation. So picking up people, moving cargo, that's pretty much our job. We drive buses, tractor trailers, wreckers, forklifts, mm -hmm. and vans. Mm -hmm. what's, what's actually interesting is their job is like, you know, we can do some stuff like in TMO, but they're the experts. So pretty much on like your guys' license, you guys get certified on any kind of vehicle, like transportation wise. Mm -hmm. So they like from TMO, they transportate like certain cargoes that we need them to. Uh, and what else is it? You guys like drive distinguished members on base and all that. Yep. And then what was it called? What else you guys do? Well, licenses. So if license. you need a license, you come to us. That's true. Like if you have, you need a license from them to actually drive any kind of GOV, which is a government vehicle on base. And then you guys are the ones who certify us if we have to work on the flight line, right? Is that air traffic control? That's air traffic control, oh. like command post. But you have to certify our license, I think. If you want to get licensed, put a vehicle on your license. Mm -hmm. Well, your unit would have to do their vehicle stuff. Gotcha. Yeah, they'd have to train you. Mm -hmm. And maybe we might do it. Depends mm -hmm. on what base you're at. Mm -hmm. But then when that's all signed and done, you give it to our licensing staff. And then they'll put it on the, the form. And you're good. Gotcha. Do we rent the vehicles from you guys too? Yep. Yeah. Drive it. So if you guys need to go like to appointments and stuff, you can... Uh, Ask them if they have vehicles so you don't have to use your personal one, if they have extra. Uh, if you need anything for base-wide, like if you don't have the vehicle actually in your area, like in your section, you have to request for one. Like if you guys need a pickup, a minivan, borrow a forklift and all that. So that's pretty much their job overall and stuff, as you can see, important. And so what do you guys like? Where you guys can be stationed at? Be stationed pretty much anywhere. Except for the Air Force Academy, that's all civilian. Mm -hmm. Randolph, mm -hmm. Randolph, that's all civilian. Mm -hmm. But back to the U drive it. Um, if you're TDY, that's that's like pretty much the one of the only reasons why you could get a vehicle. Yeah. Or if you need it for medical vehicle, things, right? Too. Uh, medical, yeah, you're gonna have to use your own vehicle. But they said if you, they said if you request one, you can maybe get one. I don't know if that's true. Yeah. But. There's a, yeah, there's rules and everything for it. You exactly. Like figure it out. So as you can see, like, it, that's the same with, like, traffic management. Like, my old, my friend who did the supply, he said pretty much everyone was open. But in the Air Force, they technically sometimes, they, was it, they uh, contract the jobs out to civilians uh, in TMO. There, there was Guam. They did that. As you can see, there's areas in the United States that they just contract the whole civilian, like, the whole job to civilians. So th that's, uh, those ones you won't be able to be stationed at. So do you guys deploy a lot? Yeah, we deploy. It really depends on what base you're at. At McCord, they send like 10 of us at a time mm -hmm. each year. Mm -hmm. um, I guess you said Altus, they deploy a lot too. Yep. I feel so like gets a lot of people there. Yeah. So so pretty much if you if your job isn't that busy or your base isn't really busy, you might get to, you might get sent out more. Because mm -hmm. McCord is not that that busy, they send a lot of us out. So. Mm -hmm. They usually task like the bases that don't have a high tempo job, pretty much, or not high tempo, but a high tempo mission or something like that. So they try to use utilize them. 
Uh, and then, of course, the last big one is your job is what, like when you look at it, what's the overall like? What do you see like? What's the overall mid part of like the mission? How does it help accomplish the Air Force mission? Um, pretty much like if you're deploying, or yeah, if you're deploying, you gotta need transportation to get out there. Mm -hmm. A lot of the stuff we drive the buses to take people to places. Um, if you need stuff moved, like if there's a pallet that you can't pick up by your own hands mm -hmm. and you don't have your own forklift, you could call us and we'll do it for you. Mm -hmm. That's true. So we pretty much make sure that the base keeps moving. So also, uh, like for TMO, like I broke down the four sections. Uh, does VOPS have like different sections that like in there, like when people would look at it, it's not just like everyone's just driving people around, it's broken down more, mm -hmm. right? So you have like, for example, dispatch, where they send people into different sections, and then what else do you guys have? Well, you have the main driver's pool. That's where if people people call in a dispatch, or a dispatch will get people to go out. Mm -hmm. And if you're in the driver's pool, you'll go out there and drive the bus to pick up people, and take a van to pick up air crew. Um, there's also equipment support. That's where it's usually an NCO that's in there. Mm -hmm. Maybe a senior airman, but they pretty much run the facilities. Is there also one that does deliveries? Yes. Yeah, no, that's Doc Cargo. It's pretty much like the UPS of gotcha. the base. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Doc Cargo will probably work with you and TMO. Gotcha. Do stuff. Gotcha. And then the what's it called? Most airmen like who are just coming from tech school, besides doing their CDCs, they would start in main army. Yes, main area as drivers and stuff. So besides the uh, like driving and stuff, what else do you learn to do in the ops? Um, the driving is pretty much it. Don't you I don't mean, you learn how to tie down? Oh yeah, strap. Yeah. That's important. Like oh, yeah. they teach, they actually teach us in TMO a little bit sometimes. Yeah, when you're using a semi or a tractor trailer to mm -hmm. or a record to pick stuff up, they teach you how to like strap things up, how to. Use chains and binders to make sure that the whatever you're picking up mm -hmm. or whatever you're moving doesn't fall off and potentially hurt somebody. And, uh, pretty much. <laughs> As you guys can see, uh, VOPS is a, I think, it's a like high high demand job, and it's a needed job. As you can see uh, from the interview. And the importance, you can be stationed pretty much anywhere. Uh, just like any, I think any kind of logistics job is high demand and required by the mil uh, the Air Force. But as you know and can tell, it can translate into the civilian world as well. Like from that TMO job I talked about, the supply and then vehicle operations, it can be translated into civilian work if you ever need that. So you can build that repertoire in the military and use it if you ever get out and all that if you want to continue in that career path. So guys, please like this video, share it, comment below, ask any questions. I can reach out to him. He actually has YouTube, so he might sometimes looks at the videos. He can maybe comment. Uh, so overall, like, do you think people would enjoy the job, see the benefits or something? I mean, it's not. It's a pretty simple job. Yep. Just drive people around or move things. Mm -hmm. If you want to, like, you can get a CDL pretty easily with their job. It's pretty convenient. Are you talking about when you transfer? Yeah, if you go back to civilian world, you can get a CDL. Mm -hmm. But I recommend getting it before you get out. Yep. But so like in a lot of things, like you can get certified in certain jobs in the military. Uh, you definitely should do that before because it'll be cheaper for you and maybe for your employer if you get that stuff because you should be certified for a while. But yeah, guys, definitely subscribe to my channel if you want to follow me and other social media, Instagram, uh, Snapchat, same name, Kotaro Prince. Share this video. You want me? You want your social media to be put out there? Nah, I'm good. <laughs> no. All right, guys. Thank you.